as you can see, the Michelin Ginetta Junior cars are heading out onto the circuit now. And uh, we are not too far away at all uh, from getting this race underway. Of course, the grid for this one uh, set by their second best times in qualifying. Remember, they only have three flying laps uh, in qualifying as well, so quite the pressure cooker situation. And it is the driver leading this queue of cars, Leo Robinson, uh, who will be on pole position. Of course, Leo was briefly, briefly leading uh, this morning before uh, Freddie Slater disappeared off into the distance. Uh, however, Freddie is going to have an uphill battle this time because he is starting from 12th position. He has his work cut out. He really, really does. As you say, they only had three laps this morning in which to set a time uh, for the main race. The, uh, well, the first time was for race one. The second best time was for race two. We saw at least one driver, I think it was Finn Harrison, who had a time deleted as well in that session. So both of his times will have counted. And uh, Freddie Slater, who had that great start to the day, there on the GP circuit, there on the second row alongside Finn Harrison, who went from 20th to second in race one yesterday on the Grand Prix circuit. Robinson on the favoured outside line with great attraction, more rubber laid down, but Pomovsky will have the inside and that can be beneficial. Well, absolutely. Pomovsky's just got to get away. And as long as she is alongside Robinson into that first corner, we'll have the track position, of course. As you say, Robinson on the racing line on the outside does seem to be a little bit further behind yeah. his start box. He could have easily come forward at least a metre onto them yellow marks, which is the position for pole position for uh, the 37. So a little bit further back here this time. 20 minutes of racing begins now and it's a good start seemingly from most of the drivers there in the pack. Let's look at turn one. Who is leading the way into the first corner? It's Alicia Palmovsky. Palmovsky leads the way. Second place it looks to be Finn Harrison who's gotten a good getaway. So on each of the first two rows the driver on the inside has gotten the better start. It's Palmovsky uh, from Finn Harrison. Third place for Chase Fernandez. Our pole sitter Leo Robinson being bullied down to fourth make that fifth as Hugo Schwarzer gets up the inside of him the 78 car sideways as well under braking uh, going into Beckett great move by Hugo Schwarzer there to effectively create the gap down the inside now Palmowski going defensive at the first main overtaking opportunity since the drivers have sorted themselves out it's Alicia Palmovsky in the lead of this race for now then. It's two of the R racing cars in second and third place. And look at the number seven of Slater. Freddie Slater already up into sixth last time across the line, trying to work his way into the top five. I'll remind you now, he started from 12th position. I note that he's already got one wing mirror pushed in, so he's clearly had a few physical moments. The pack all together, and now they fan out uh, into the braking zone at Brooklyn. Uh, Slater up the inside there of Paul Citalio. Robinson. Freddie Slater, I think, is going to come through from fourth place. And Freddie Slater will lead on only lap number three of the Silverstone National Circuit, the second race of the day here. And Freddie Slater given a helping hand by the rest of the pack. Palmowski's been swallowed up, could be seventh or eighth by the time they leave Beckett. Yeah, Pomovsky massively swallowed up by the pack there. She's down sixth or seventh position potentially. But Freddie Slater, I mean, he's not been in a class of his own really at any point because he's always got people stuck on his rear bumper. But how has he gotten to the lead in less than three racing laps? Incredible driving from Freddie Slater. Opportunistic driving from Freddie Slater. They're in second place behind him now. I believe that's uh, Porter as well, who started the lap in sixth place. So Mikey Porter in second place is off track. There goes the 78 of Seaworthen. A couple of others also going off track, coming out of Luffield Bend. Uh, but for now, it's Freddie Slater in the lead. Mikey Porter in second. Then it's Finn Harrison in the 38. And hold on a minute. It's the R Racing top three again. They've only done a found a way to do it. In fact, no, sorry. Okay, good. Finn Harrison uh, for Assetto Motorsport. They can't have it all their own way after all. Uh, but what a drive this is from both Slater and Porter. This order has changed significantly from what we had on the grid. Freddie Slater from 12th to 1st position. 11 places gained thus far. Mikey Porter has gained 6. 
make that five because through goes Finn Harrison at Beckett's. Nicely done by Harrison. Just got to the inside at Beckett's and Chase Fernandez says, I'll have a bit of that if you don't mind as well. Side by side. No, actually ducking behind Mikey Porter is Chase Fernandez. No doubt he'll try and go to the inside if he possibly can going into Brooklands. We know that Chase is one to uh, try and make the moves any chance he gets, but no opportunity on that occasion. Leo Robinson there in fifth place, of course. He was our pole sitter. Alicia Palmovsky, who was on the front row with him, she's all the way down in P8. Yeah, led the early phase of the race, and uh, Palmovsky now, who was on the podium yesterday with a superb P2 in the second race of yesterday afternoon, now going to have to work very, very hard. Down in eighth place, but the train of cars from first down into eighth place, split by just under two seconds. They are still nose to tail. There's a move, I think, by Fernandez down the inside of Porter. Is that for third place? Into Cops, I think it is, or is Porter, is Porter back up into second? I think he is. We've got the two R racing cars nose to tail once again at the front. It looks like it was Fernandez getting down the inside of Finn Harrison. Not the only driver getting down the inside of Finn Harrison. Leo Robinson squeezes his way through, and Hugo Schwartz is coming through as well. Harrison's going to drop from second down to fifth at least. Schwartz is going to be on the outside by the time they get to the end of the Wellington Straight. I think by then he's going to have ducked back in the slipstream. He already has. Going to try and give that one another game. Palmowski's the first one to come out of the slipstream. Knows the field splits at the end of the straight. Didn't know whether she was going to try and get that run all the way around the outside, trying to get a little bit later on the brakes than the others, but looks like they're still as they were, with the exception of the overtake earlier on. But the field back together again because earlier on it was the top eight down to Palmowski. It looks like it could be all the way down to Douglas now in 11th that are all nose to tail in this Ginetta Junior race number two here today on the Saturday of the Ginetta G-Fest. Yes, exactly. Practically the top dozen now in one long queue and Freddie Slater feels the need to go defensive towards Cops Corner for the seventh time in this race. It is Freddie Slater from Mikey Porter. Our racing teammates, yes, behaving as teammates. <laughs> nah. Chase for now Fernandez there in third position, just keeping a watching brief for Assetto as well. Although I think the three may be wise to work together right now. Uh, hopefully they can, uh, because at the moment they're breaking away from this battle for fourth place. Finn Harrison there in fourth position. He's got to pass Leo Robinson once again. It's now side by side uh, between Robinson and uh, one of the others further back. I think it might have been Palmovsky. No, in fact, it's... Uh, Schwarzer and uh, Harrison side by side. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the top three, just a few car lengths clear. I note that Freddie Slater didn't go defensive there either. So I think there may have been some signalling between the three to say, hey, we've got the opportunity here to break away. Let's do it. Well, those behind are doing them some favours as well because they're squabbling it out over fourth place. And you can see the gap that it's created between the top three from uh, Slater Porter and Fernandez back to Leo Robinson. They had six tenths between them. I think it's going to be nearer one and a half seconds. It certainly is this time. Finn Harrison now coming under pressure from those behind. Hugo oh. Schwartz and Leo Robinson. The uh, the top three working together didn't quite go to plan, did it? Yeah, peace time <laughs> has ended. Uh, Chase Fernandez gets back up the inside of Mikey Porter for second place and uh, immediately has a go at uh, Freddie Slater up the inside at Beckett's as well and he manages to pick his way through only for Freddie Slater to carry the momentum out of the corner and move back into the lead Fernandez ducks behind the rear bumper as soon as he can they're now attached to each other as absolutely attached to each other I don't know if Fernandez is maybe trying to make it a two horse race by ditching Mikey Porter I'm not so sure that's going to work I think it's going to do more to bring uh, the rest of the top 10 to their bumper uh, than eliminate the threat from Mikey Porter but nonetheless Slater uh, briefly losing the lead to Fernandez uh, but very well counter-attacked well I saw a comment earlier on on the Ginetta uh, TV channel that said can you bump draft in these cars you absolutely <laughs> can bump draft in these cars and Porter's going to take a wider line this time trying to get on the power earlier which is what Freddie Slater did in order to get him we've got a spin in the middle of the place like Leo Robinson facing the wrong way heavy contact with the back of Robinson he's definitely out the left rear wheel facing in the wrong direction yeah someone in the pack there collecting didn't quite catch the number on that but Leo Robinson in a spin it was one of the prep tech cars I think that may well have been Douglas in the 24 Jocelyn in the 26 uh, but nonetheless a uh, big I think, moment I think it's Jocelyn I don't think he set a sector yeah. time in sector two you yeah it is Henry Jocelyn yeah also out of this race 
That's a shame then for Henry Jocelyn. He got uh, collected in that, uh, although the car was stationary. The safety car is out, so Freddie Slater will continue on in the lead of an isolated uh, race for the time being. But, uh, well, I think we needed the calm down pills there. I'm glad that uh, most of the drivers carried on. Uh, Pamovsky was caught out in that one. She continues in 13th. I think a couple of the others who were behind her in the pack also got moved down the order. Uh, but unfortunately for both Leo Robinson and Henry Jocelyn, uh, those two uh, are going to go no further. Uh, we've got eight minutes remaining. The time, of course, will go down. There's the car stationary. The uh, field making the way all the way around the outside of the... Uh, stationary car of Leo Robinson Henry Joslin was able able to take his car uh, under its own power at least off the circuit as we uh, see Leo Robinson's car stricken on the inside the field coming round so we're going to have a, a couple of moments of clear up you see no marshals near that as all the cars came round they'll now have an opportunity uh, with the field being so close together uh, to now work to clear that car they're going to get around about a minute and a half or so as the field is slowed down uh, to get the circuit clear. We're definitely not going racing this time. As we see the sheer level of debris there on the apex of the corner. I don't think they want to take too many chances of that, so we'll only go back to racing if the circuit is deemed to be in A1 condition once again. We've got four and a half minutes left on the clock at this stage. Uh, lap takes one minute and 11 seconds. Uh, so I think if we do get racing again, I think it probably will end up being a one-lap dash. But to be honest with you, with that car just going up onto a flatbed now, uh, the Jocelyn number 26, I, I reserve my judgment uh, <laughs> to be a bit of a doubt there. Let's hope now after all of this build-up that there's not a chequered flag waiting for them at the uh, exit of the final corner. No, it's a green flag and it's a one-lap dash as they approach cops. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. Hold your breath. One lap to decide the final Janetta Junior race of the day here. Freddie Slater defensive to the inside. As you'd expect, Chase Fernandez takes a wider line, trying to get the run up towards Maggots and Beckett's, but he's coming under pressure as well from Mikey Porter, who's coming down the inside. Fernandez is going to get hung out to dry on the outside here because Finn Harrison is going to come down the inside as well. All of this playing in the hands of Freddie Slater, who at the front, she's hoping to break away. Fernandez forced wide out onto the rumble strip, not the only driver as well. Well, we've got grass being thrown up. I think that's Luca Hopkinson out onto the grass on the outside as they head down the Wellington straight for the final time. Freddie Slater still in the lead then. Will either of the Assetto drivers be able to do anything? What about Hugo Schwarzer diving up the inside of Finn Harrison? Don't think he's going to find a way through there. Freddie Slater has a car length or two in his favour. Hugo Schwarzer with a bit of a nudge to Chase Fernandez. Please, please, I want that second place. Absolutely not. Freddie Slater, though, controls the safety car restart perfectly. He wins the one lap dash to the flag. Or does he? Because Fernandez got a bump draft right at the end there. There, but Freddie Slater just about holds on to it to take another win. Two wins from two on the Saturday here at the Silverstone National Circuit. Good job, Freddie Slater. Chase Fernandez held on to second ahead of Hugo Schwarzer, who made up a couple of positions there right at the end. Finn Harrison in fourth. Uh, Mikey Porter in fifth place. Charlie Hart in sixth. Uh, must say a big word to Mackenzie Douglas as well, who was right there on the back couple of rows of the grid. He finished in seventh place ahead of Tom Sprague, Luca Hopkinson and Eddie Robinson. Your top ten.